Hey what's up YouTube, welcome to this tutorial on the basics of navigating 3DS Max and getting used to its interface. Sorry I've been gone for a while, I've been waiting for my YouTube network to release my channel because as it turns out YouTube networks are a scam. They take your money and they don't provide much services in return. So now that that's over with, I have a bunch of videos lined up that should be releasing in the next few weeks that I'm, I already have recorded and I'm excited to share with you guys. So the first thing you'll notice when you open up 3ds Max is something that you actually will not see on my screen at the moment, and that is the welcome screen. And all that is is some basic file uh, preset files that you can upload, some demo projects, and there'll be a list of your recent files that you have open in 3ds Max. Um, I accidentally unticked the box, so it won't open anymore. But all you have to do is exit that out, and you'll be greeted with this screen. And the first thing you'll see are the four viewports that are staring at you in the face. You have the front viewport up in the top right, the top viewport in the top left, the left viewport in the bottom left, and the perspective viewport in the bottom right. You'll immediately figure out what these do once we start creating objects and how these work. So on the right side of the screen, you'll see a menu with six tabs at the top. These tabs are the create tab, the modify tab, the hierarchy tab, the motion tab, the display tab, and the utilities tab. So first tab we're going to be looking at is the create tab. This is going to be the tab that allows you to create basic shapes and geometry. In the other tabs we have in here, we can create shapes, we can create lights, we can create cameras, helpers, space warps, and other systems, which those are a little more advanced, um, and we're not going to be covering that in this tutorial, but there are plenty of tutorials out there, and I'll be covering them in future tutorials. So in order to create an object, what you want to do is you want to hover over the box and then you click on it. For example, if we want to create a box, we can click on the box box. And once that's highlighted blue, we can go down into our perspective tab, click and drag to drag out the length and width, release the mouse button and drag up and click to set the height of the object. And there are plenty of objects we can create. In this drop down menu, we can select standard primitives, which are cubes or spheres, things like that. We have extended primitives, which are a little more complex. For example, things like torus knots and other strange objects. And then in other drop-down arrows, we have even more useful things, such as stairs, where if we click on the spiral staircase box, we can drag out a spiral staircase. And right-click to exit out of a tool. So now we are back to the default select tool. And as you'll notice, after we create an object, the objects are added to this panel over here on the left side of the screen. This is a list of all the objects we have in our scene and is very helpful when you get more complex scenes with hundreds of objects that you need to switch between quickly and that you might not always be able to see, for example, if they're hidden inside other objects. So you can select the objects by just clicking on the ones in the list. And because every time you create a box, it'll be listed as box 001, box 002, things like that, you can right click and select rename. And we can name this something like blue box and then hit enter. And now we have renamed an object so we can easily find it in the list later on. Next up is the modify tab. So if we go back to the panel on the right and click on the modify tab, we will see it displays all the settings and parameters for the objects we created. For example, let's say we created this box and I don't like the width of the box. So what's cool about 3ds Max that's actually better than things like Blender is unfortunately in Blender, once you create an object with the width and height or radius or whatever, that object is now locked to those dimensions. But in 3ds Max, they're editable forever until you convert it into an editable mesh. So, for example, if we go over here and change the width, we can change the width of the box. Or I can change the length of the box. Let's make the box a little wider. Something like that. And all these objects are editable. For example, if I click on the stairs, I can change the radius of the stairs. Let's make it a really wide radius. That looks cool. And if I go over to the torus knot, I can change the amount of segments that it's made up of. Let's lower the segments to something 
See, I can make it look really cool and geometric if I wanted to. I can change the radius. I can change a bunch of different settings. Well, pretty much every setting about the object. And another cool thing about the modifier tab are modifiers, which is what I guess the tab is named after. So if you go to the top, you'll notice the modifier list. Now, for those of you who don't know, a modifier is a non-destructive way to edit the mesh. For example, if we click on this drop down arrow and go down to the, um, let's select our staircase and make sure our staircase is selected and uh, click the drop down arrow and click the bend modifier. Now, if we adjust the angle, you'll see that our stairs start getting bent it's all funky. So let's bend this at, I don't know, negative 90 degrees. We messed up our stairs. Nobody's going to walk down those. Now let's add another bend modifier on top of that. And except let's change the bend axis. So let's change the bend axis to the Y axis. And let's see what that does. Now let's change it to the X axis. Yeah, I like the Y axis better. Let's bend it like that. Okay, so we've seriously messed up our stairs. So what do we do now? Well, the cool thing about like I said before, is modifiers are non-destructive, meaning we can go back down the stack and change things like stair width. Although this isn't going to be obvious. Let's lower the angle on the top bend a little bit. Okay, so say we change our minds and we want the stair width to be a little skinnier. What we can do is we can go all the way back down to the spiral stair properties and we can change the stair width to something much skinnier. And the modifiers on top of that are still applied to the object. And if we didn't like the modifiers, all we have to do is right click and delete the modifier. And we can go all the way back down to our original staircase, which is very, very cool. And very helpful for when you create more complex objects where you don't want to destroy the original mesh. Now, the other tabs, we have the hierarchy tab which will allow you to change the pivot points, the object center, how the object rotates when it's modified using the controls, like when you move it around and rotate it, things like that. I'm um, not going to be getting it too in-depth as everything's pretty self-explanatory and there's no need to be messing with those right now. Next we have the motion tab. This is where you can set trajectories and parameters and keyframes for animation. And this is mainly simple, but we can also do um, key curves and things like that. We have the display tab. This is how your objects are displayed in your scene. Um, for example, if we wanted to set the wireframe, change the wireframe to dis instead of displaying object color to display material color instead, we can do that. Or we can change the shading to the object color, which as you can see isn't really affecting anything. Um, if we had a mix of different types of objects in our scene, for example, we had geometry and we had some cameras and lights and we only wanted to see the cameras. We could untick geometry and then only the cameras in the scene would be uh, visible or the other way around where we wanted to hide the cameras. We can tick the camera box and all the cameras will disappear from our scene. Um, so this is again good when you have more complex scenes where things start to get visually cluttered and you can't find your way around that easy anymore. So this will really speed up the workflow. Now the last tab we have over here is the utilities tab. I don't see using these that much because all that's contained here is like an asset browser, which is like a knockoff Windows Explorer. Um, <laughs> I don't see any advantage to using this over Windows Explorer as Windows Explorer allows you to just navigate and drag and drop something. So I don't, again, don't see any reason to use that. But there is actually, I take that back, one helpful thing, which is this measure tool. So if we click on it, and select an object and then look under here it shows us really helpful information such as surface area volume center of mass um, and some other information like dimensions because this allows us to optimize our 3d print and calculate things like the volume of material we will need to print an object which is a great which is a key factor in calculating cost and we also have Max Script, which I'm not going to get into this right now. 3ds Max is inbuilt programming language, where you can script your own tools and sort of like how Python works in Blender. Okay, now we have our basic scene. Let's learn how to navigate. So first things first, 
Let's make sure the perspective viewport is selected by middle clicking in the viewport. You'll notice the yellow border around it. That means this viewport is selected. And we are going to hit Alt W. And this will maximize the viewport to the full screen. Now there are two ways to navigate the scene. One way, which is a way very few people actually use, is this view cube up in the upper right hand corner. We can click and drag to rotate around our scene or we can click on the individual faces of the cube to rotate around and snap to the views. And then we can hit the little home icon to go back to the default view. Now the way most people do it is they prefer to use the keyboard and mouse hotkeys. And in order to do that, you can middle mouse click and drag to pan, or we can use alt middle mouse click to drag and rotate around. And by default, 3ds Max will automatically pivot and rotate around the selected object. For example, if I select this cube, we are now pivoting and rotating around the cube. Now, it's kind of off-center, so we can't see the cube that much. There's a really helpful button to do that. To focus on the cube, we can hit the Z key, and that'll zoom in and rotate around the cube now which is very helpful again when we have cluttered scenes you can use it to navigate very quickly and move the camera around for quick editing. But let's get real, the place where we set our objects in this scene, if I go back to the home view, the place where we created our objects is probably not going to be the place where they actually end up in our scene. We're going to want to move them around, we're going to want to rotate them a little bit. And that is where the transform controls come in. So in the upper toolbar You'll notice these three controls. We have move, rotate, and uniform scale transform buttons. So we can use these to switch between move, rotate, and scale controls respectively. Or we can use the W key, E key, and R key to switch between them, or Q to go back to the default control. And we are going to use these to move our staircase into position so that way somebody can walk from the bottom of the staircase and end up on top of this cube. So first off, let's select our staircase, hit W to switch to the move tool, and you'll see these three arrows. If you're unfamiliar with 3D programs, you can use these arrows by clicking and dragging to drag it along a specified axis, or you can use these planes to drag along two axes at once. So we are going to drag this in the middle of this cube. So we're going to make this gizmo line up to that corner so that the radius of the staircase is aligned to that edge. And then we are going to hit the E key to switch to rotate. Now just like the scale, you can drag along the axes um, to drag along only one axis at a time, or you can drag along the center of the ball to enter track ball mode. This is really handy for just kind of randomizing the way you rotate things and just adding chaos to your scene. But we are going to undo that by hitting Control Z. And I'm actually going to move this a little closer in like that. And then we are going to hit the R key to switch to the scale mode because as you can probably realize, this staircase is not lining up with the top of this cube. So just like the other keys, or sorry, the other controls, I can click and drag along the z-axis to scale along the z-axis. However, with modifiable meshes such as the staircase, which can still be editable, I do not recommend using the scale to change the size. Instead, I'd recommend undoing that, going over to the modify tab, and changing the rise property. Now, that may seem like a simple thing, but once you start adding meshes and adding modifiers, the scale value will affect how modifiers are applied on top of this. So that's something just to keep in mind in future use. It's better to modify the modifier properties than to modify the scale and rotation and things like that. Now, that covers the basics of this tutorial um, and how to navigate the user interface. In the next tutorial, I will be going over how to set up, light, and render a basic model in 3ds max so see you next time